David, come here. I want you to look in there, and I want you to see if you see me when I move around there. You see if you see me. Okay. You see most of me? Okay. All right, that's good. Okay, good to see you guys here tonight. Glad you made it. How you been doing, Paul? Pretty good. I think I'm good. Okay. Well, they were talking about me. I'm being pressed in the middle of the night. Okay. 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 In the labor? Yeah, so we're going to Can they do something now about that? Oh. Yeah, that's been saying this, 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 this man that's a friend of mine, he said his daughter in law, she had a problem with her labor. What they did, they took that part of it out. He said it regenerates. And she's been living that way. Of the liver? Yeah. yeah. You take half the liver. Yeah. That way? Well, pretty good. Okay, you're doing okay. I'm not worried about not having a big you know. Good. I know it's good. I had an area there that I climbed there that. My sugar level was high, and I couldn't hardly get it down. I'd walk, I'd, you know, yeah. walk, take smaller portions and everything else. Yeah. And I just could not get it down. I got kind of depressed because when I check your blood, they already know it's going to be high. Yeah, so, so did you. I started giving me a little bit more insulin. And it's done the trick now. It's back to normal. Okay. So, but I really got depressed because why check your blood and it's going to be hot. Yeah. And you don't eat that much. I do it when and I've been walking. And Did you cut back on carbs? Uh-huh. She's lost weight. Yeah. Well, her Ozempic, Ozempic has helped you lose weight, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Hey, there's Mary. Mary, is Margaret coming? She was going to, but she was running so late. She says, I'm going to be late. I tried to tell her just to come on, but she, she's not So she's not going to come. Okay. What happened to that lady that you brought two or three times, maybe three times? Joan? I don't know. She she came, and then she decided she didn't have anything more to learn or something. I don't know what happened. I don't know what her name was. Do you remember having someone? Oh, I bet it was Karen. Karen. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Whatever happened to Karen? Well, she's doing fine. She's going to a uh, nutritionist next week, I think. Okay. 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 She's trying to get me to go to the same place that she's doing. But Do you think you need to? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, come on in, John. I know what I'm supposed to do. It's just doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on in, John. But Margaret's going to call you. She wants to call you. Okay. Okay. All right. That's good. I like your shirt, though, Ben. That's pretty sure. It's going to look good on the camera, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be on video. Oh, is it? Yeah. You're going to have your face on video? Oh, too? yeah. Well, don't you ever watch any of my shorts? I know. I tell I you, I just you sure are. Well, there might be in your head, but. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Okay, I think we're probably all here. Let's um, let's go ahead and get started. I like that first little statement there, don't you?
Getting blood sugars under control may seem impossible, but help is coming for you to take control. Let me, let me start over. Getting blood sugars under control may seem impossible, but help is coming for you to take control. When we take the initiative in difficult situations like blood sugar control, we'll feel better and have the confidence to continue to live in a self-managed way. I've just experienced the worst A1C that I've ever had. So I'm intensely striving to watch the amount of carbohydrates I eat. And even with very low blood sugar readings, I've been in control. But an incident recently warned me of caution for low reading for a low reading like 49. There are certain things you don't do when that low. I've learned from a body shop bill of over $3,000. Don't drive. So take control. You won't be disappointed like this man did. Now I want to tell you about a man that took control. Here we go. Can you imagine flying in a sex passenger one engine plane with a pilot and another passenger? Not hard to imagine so far, but when the pilot admits, I'm not feeling well, and then suddenly slumps over the controls, sending the plane into a nosedive, what do you do? One of two passengers, Darren, climbed over two rows of seats, moved the pilot from his seat, and then sat down at the controls. His only experience on a plane was a passenger. And he, can, he contacted air traffic control, where one of the controllers was also a part-time flight instructor. Robert recalled, I've just, I just knew I had to keep him calm so that he could reach the runway and tell him how to reduce the power so that he could descend to land. So remember when two passengers on the plane and the pilot admits, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm not feeling well, and then suddenly slumps over the controls? Well, Darren gets into the pilot's seat, but has only been a passenger. Robert, at air traffic control, did keep Darren calm and gave him instructions until the wheels touched the runway. He remembers telling him, you look great. You're a little fast. What I want you to do is to grab the throttle. Just pull that back a little bit because we need you to be slowed down. And so Darren followed his vital instructions and Robert met his new student, Darren, and declared he's the best student he has ever had. And in return, Darren gave him a big hug and thanked him. He admitted that he just wanted to get home to his pregnant wife. I call that taking control, wouldn't you? Can you just imagine being in a plane like that? Has anyone ever been in a, a two-passenger plane, a small plane before? Ed? Man, I want that pilot to still be conscious. I've been up two times with situations like that. But as the plane needed to slow down from a safe landing, we often need to slow down in life and listen to guidance and instructions for living well, especially when it comes to our diabetes. And so, looking at wisdom, what does God's wisdom teach us? I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths, that is, healthy paths. The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. And finally, those who get wisdom love their own lives. Those who cherish understanding will soon prosper. So living with wisdom for diabetes in the morning, afternoon, and evening is essential. Diabetes in the evening, we need to manage that. And wisdom's way teaches the following on the importance of timing. Anyone who refuses to work doesn't plow in the right season. And when he looks for a crop at harvest time, he doesn't find it. Proverbs 20. Finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready, and after that, build your house. Proverbs 24. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good is a timely word, Proverbs 15. So it's not good to have zeal without knowledge nor to be hasty and miss the way, Proverbs 19. And so, the way of wisdom. This is not the way of wisdom. Isn't timing everything? I'm waiting for energy and well-being to come. And if you're waiting for energy and well-being, it's not going to just happen. There has to be things you need to do at the appropriate times to have that happen. A, a sluggard 
does not plow in season, so at harvest time, or at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. Now one of the things that you can do is about timing is to eat like a king at breakfast, a prince at lunch, and a pauper at dinner. That's what new research study would promote. To do the opposite, you get these results. You might skip breakfast and eat a high-calorie dinner or supper, and that results in poor blood glucose control and extra weight. There was a study done at three different universities. And at these three universities, this is what they, they did. One of them was in Spain. This is the first large-scale prospective study to demonstrate that the timing of meals predicts weight loss effectiveness, says one professor at Harvard Medical School. Researchers studied 420 participants in a 20-week weight loss treatment program. And the research answered, could the timing of when you eat be just as important as what you eat? And so the meal with the most calories was the lunch meal. And they ate 40% of their daily calories at lunch. The time of when to eat was the factor analyzed to determine if the time made a difference in weight loss. Researchers divided participants into two groups, the early eaters and the late eaters. The early eaters ate their lunch before 3 p.m., and the late eaters any time after 3 p.m. Those who lost significantly less weight and at a slower rate were in the late eaters group. In that group, they ate fewer calories for breakfast and often skipped breakfast. But early eaters lost more weight at a faster rate, better insulin sensitivity, and they ate breakfast. And so here we are eating breakfast. How's that look? That look pretty good, Paul? What about this? I like that too. Eat. Okay, just eat the eggs. Yeah. Well, here's the here's the idea. Eat eat breakfast like a king, but be sure to cut back on the carbohydrates. Ideally, eating 15 grams of carbohydrate along with plenty of eggs will help you maintain better blood glucose levels. Our results indicate that late eaters displayed a slower weight loss rate and lost significantly less weight than early eaters, suggesting that the timing of large meals could be an important factor in a weight loss program. And so not only will eating late make it easier to gain weight, but it also makes it more challenging to maintain blood sugar control. So the lesson is to try to eat the evening meal early and the amounts of fat and carbohydrates will also determine the management of your blood glucose. And so again, eat breakfast like a king and like a prince, eat at lunch and a pauper at dinner. But if you fast during the mornings, it would look like this. So you would eat your noon meal, which would be the big one, and then an evening meal. Because you're fasting during the morning, you skip the breakfast there. Here's another factor to consider. Why fatty, saturated fat foods increase blood glucose when eaten with carbs? Now all you got to do is look at this. Do you see that there's a lot of carbs in this? And there's a lot of saturated fat as well. And you can really see it better there. But in this, one, one sixth of this, one piece, is 420 calories or 38 grams of carbohydrate and 9 grams of saturated fat. Now, what do you think is going to happen with your blood sugars if you eat that? It's going to go up. You can see that a little bit closer there. Pizza is a, a mixture of what kinds of food? Well, carbohydrate and fat. And the fats in pizza are mainly from cheese, typically cheddar and mozzarella. 
both of which can contain high amounts of saturated fat and meats. And that combination will cause blood glucose problems, like elevated blood glucose. And so someone says your blood glucose is affected by sugar and carbs, so avoid them. Don't worry about the, the other types of food. And so that is true on the left box, partially. And let me explain. Now on the right side, we see a, a proverb that says the, the mind of a person with understanding gets knowledge. The wise person listens to learn more. And so fat on the body was considered dead weight, just extra blubber that people carted around, weighing them down. But fat has been masquerading as the quiet, innocent guy hiding in the back row while packing in a considerable metabolic punch. So what should you do? Well, don't combine fat with carbohydrates is what I'm going to explain. Free fatty acids in the blood increase with high saturated fat meals. And so what does that do? Insulin resistance increases with high saturated fat meals with carbohydrates. And with that resistance, you need more insulin to break through the insulin resistance barrier. And this compounds blood glucose control for those with type 1 diabetes and many with type 2 diabetes with high insulin resistance. So what does that do? Insulin resistance increases with high saturated fat meals. And that is eating saturated fat like, here's an example, a hamburger with a bun. Also changes the timing of the rise in blood glucose after a meal. Fat takes up to six hours to move through the gastrointestinal tract. It also slows the carbohydrates in doing that. Now, two hours later, you might look and you're, you're a pretty decent per, uh, number, 129. But five hours later, you could be 282. Well, what happened? The fat slowed the process of metabolism, and this is especially noticeable when you eat carbohydrates with the fat like a hamburger bun. Now, there's fast-acting insulins, these two, Novolog, Humalog, Biaps there, and I highly recommend that one because it becomes active in just two minutes, where the others take 15 to 20 minutes. But they just stay active for about four hours. And when you eat a high-fat meal, a significant amount of carbohydrates remains after the four-hour life of a rapid-acting insulin for metabolism. And what does that do? That's where you get the bounce up. Huh? Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, you say you're using what? What is it? Okay. All right. Okay. All righty. Well, that's good. Glad to hear that. Now, when it comes to eating, here's how we normally eat a hamburger. For example, Red Robin's bacon cheeseburger has 71 grams of total fat, with 24 being saturated. The burger also has 50 grams of carbohydrates. One effective way to, to combat that is to eat your hamburger lettuce wrapped instead of with a bun. By leaving off the carbohydrate bun, your blood sugars won't spike up. They won't spike up. And so fat causes insulin resistance and it slows the carb digestion process. So what to do? What do you do? Well, avoid meals containing 40 or more grams of fat, especially if the fat is saturated. In fact, keep it to 16 grams a day or like five per meal. And here's another example. 
when you eat pizza, uh, eat the thin crust because the other has lots of carbohydrate in it. And uh, that will affect your blood sugar control. Yeah, Clarence? Yeah, yeah. Do you put anything on it? Okay. All right. Does it have cheese? Okay. Yeah. Well, but you keep it thin crust and don't eat a whole bunch of it that way. Okay. Well, if you look at this now, the medium thin crust uh, has 18 grams of carbohydrates. And we see the amount of saturated fat, which is less than five that I recommended. But a lot of people like to have two pieces. Well, instead of having two pieces, why not have a salad instead of the second piece? Have one piece with a good sized salad there. And I think you'll manage quite well. When it comes to eating hamburgers, has anyone ever had the lettuce wrap hamburger before you have? Carl's okay. Jr. Huh? Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. does? Okay. Did you make a good one? Okay. Carl's Jr. Well, here's an example of one right there. Lettuce wrapped. Now, another thing that you can do after eating is this, according to research done and attributed to the Mayo Clinic. If people sit after a meal, their blood sugar peaks like a mountain for about two hours. If, however, people take a 15-minute walk at one mile per hour, that's just on the leisure walk, after a meal, the mountains become safe and gentle rolling hills. With a one mile per hour walk after a meal, blood sugar peaks are halved. And so if you go up 100 points, after eating a meal, by taking a walk, you can cut that back to 50 instead of 100. Now, here's another thing. That when you eat, eat the vegetables first, and then the protein, and finally the carbohydrates, if you have any. That's the order that you need to take there. The author of Glucose Revolution writes, the slower the trickling of glucose into our bloodstream, the flatter our glucose curves and the better we feel. We can get exactly the same thing, but by eating carbs last, we make a big difference in our physical and mental well-being. What's more, when we eat foods in the right order, our pancreas produces less insulin, and less insulin helps us to return to fat-burning mode more quickly, and the positive results of which are many and include losing weight. And so that is the first little section that I wanted to go over there. So did everyone learn what to do when you have a hamburger? If you want to have better control of your blood sugars, eat a lettuce wrap. Now sometimes I cheat and I eat one half of the bun. You know. Mayo's got a bunch of fat in it. Paul, and that's going to contribute to slowing down the carbs process, metabolism. So eat the uh, lettuce wrapped hamburger and don't be eating two big old pieces of pizza, especially the thick crust kind. Eat one, have some, have some salad if you're going to do that. And what do you do after a meal? Walk. Yeah. After not, you don't take a nap. You walk first. Then you can come back and take a nap if you feel like it. Okay? Now, on to the next little point here. A good person gives life to others. The wise person teaches others how to live. Go to the ant, you slugger, consider its ways, and be wise. Now, when we consider the ways of an ant, we too can be wise. Besides being on the move to gather their food, Ants also work together. One of their unusual ways is how they can support each other during a flood. Fire ants still survive after massive flooding. How? They form a water repellent raft. During enormous flooding in South Carolina, 
ant rafts appeared, flooding, destroying homes and businesses, and nearly a dozen people lost their lives. But these strange rafts appeared in the water after the flooding. And when we consider the ways the colonies of, of ants, they formed these survival rafts. Ants used their jaws, legs, and sticky pads to build living rafts out of their bodies. They can do this in less than two minutes. So supporting each other is one of the ways of an ant. Supporting each other is a way for us to be wise also. Here's another example. A deputy saw an unbelievable sight while traveling at night on an Oregon highway. He thought he, was, he thought he saw some animal running down the middle of the road, and his dashboard camera was recording it all as he got closer. And so he was stunned to see a two-year-old boy running down the highway. The toddler was in danger. The deputy slammed on his brakes. He immediately got out of his car and scooped up the boy as a semi-truck passed nearby. A tragic story could have unfolded if the deputy had been distracted and not carefully observing the road that night. That little boy, however, was rescued and brought to safety. The deputy soon discovered that his parents were frantically looking for him. He had slipped out of a nearby community center while his parents were cleaning. And so that little boy is like so many people running down the road of life. They need help. What would you do if you saw a toddler walking on the road? Without hesitation, you would stop and rescue him. The Lord tells us that what is desirable in a man is his kindness, Proverbs 19. Desiring kindness for others or from others is what we all want. And kindness is appreciated. Kindness toward a lost toddler should be easy. And transferring that attitude toward others is needed. So one of the dangers of having diabetes is hypoglycemia. In the diabetes attitudes, wishes, and needs research study, researchers found a deep fear of hypoglycemia, blood glucose levels below 70. And these episodes can happen at any time during the day. So being prudent and alert is essential. Hypoglycemia is an acute stress factor for people using insulin or on certain kinds of medications Blood glucose can get low when too much insulin is in circulation. And adrenaline is the fight or flight hormone that alerts the body to danger or stressful situations. And so adrenaline produces symptoms of low blood glucose like weakness, hunger, sweating, trembling, butterflies, and heart palpitations. Epinephrine or adrenaline activates glucagon. Glucagon releases stored glucose or glycogen in the liver, raising blood glucose levels. A, a person without diabetes might experience some of these symptoms if they hadn't eaten for several hours. And what I just described are the usual responses for people without diabetes. Still, the normal responses are com compromised for those with type 1 diabetes or type 2 on insulin or other kind of medications where there's too much insulation circulating. So taking carbohydrates to raise the blood sugar level is essential to prevent dangerous lows. The epinephrine response gets blunted for many people who have had type 1 diabetes for a long time. And they lose the early warning signs of low blood glucose. Lower and lower blood glucose levels have to occur before the response is, occurs. So instead of being in the 60s for blood glucose and the response to it, you might drop into the 40s or less. According to Jocelyn Diabetes Center, new research indicates that avoiding hypoglycemia episodes can restore the proper, timely response of the epinephrine or the adrenaline, giving the warning signs of a much higher, safer blood glucose level. Now, a great precaution is to check our blood glucose more often. And when not using my continuous glucose monitoring system, I check myself up to 12 times daily. Regularly checking yourself is essential, especially if you're on insulin or other medications that can increase insulin production.
This reduces the risk of having a severe episode. And another precaution is to always have glucose tablets or Smarties or, or sweet tarts with you. So blood sugar episode, instead of putting people in their place, put yourself in their place and what they're experiencing. If your blood glucose was 38, what would best raise the blood glucose? 